Thriving people of God, my name is Enrique Brooks, senior pastor of Thrive Church and the host of the Prayer 365 podcast. Well, we're on a mission to transform lives through the lifestyle of prayer. As you come in, take a moment and say hello in the comment section. After you do that, hit the like button wherever you are. That helps tremendously with the Facebook and YouTube algorithms, simply letting it know that prayer matters to you. And after you do that, I want you to think of someone who can benefit from prayer and I want you to share this with them. Uh, today is a special day. We're going to have a, a special time together where we're going to um, have a conversation with a, a wonderful friend and a powerful pastor and, and leader of leaders, uh, Pastor Anthony A. Dix, Jr. And so uh, I, I think that somebody's going to benefit from the conversation that we're going to have today as we talk on the subject of what he's calling holy hardship, where you're able to discover how Jesus will turn your adversity into an advantage. Um, I, listen, I, I don't even want to get myself stirred up, um, but I'm excited about it already. But of course, do those three things. Say hello in the comment section. I want you to hit the like button wherever you are, and then also invite someone to pray. One of the best ways you can do that is by tagging them into our virtual prayer wall. Um, by putting their name there, number one, you're attaching them to the prayer that we're going to lift up today. But then in addition to that, um, you're going to notify them if you're on Facebook that we're coming together for our daily devotion. All right. So we've got about two and a half minutes before we get started, maybe a little less before we get started. And I want to encourage each of you to do uh, to do that. Um, for those of you that are on on our conference line, we praise God for you. Um, this morning, um, I may not be able to actually pull you up as I normally would, uh, given the fact that um, things are just um, with us having the guest speaker. It's going to be a difference in the way that we set things up today. But nevertheless, I want you to know that um, I appreciate your presence, Deaconess Diggs, as well as Minister Cynthia Jordan, uh, Sister Mary Knowles and Mother Carrie Williams. Uh, let's jump over here to Facebook and YouTube and see who we have over here so far. Uh, Sister Letharia Knight, good morning to you and God bless you. And to my mom and dad, Elder Marion and Deacon Derry Clark. Brother Marquez Smith, blessings to you, sir. Uh, Sister Metris Wingfield and Brother Merritt Wingfield, we praise God for that powerful couple. Um, Sister Vivian Morgan, as well as Brother Terry Morgan, God bless you both. Um, to my beautiful bride, First Lady Chanel Brooks, uh, to my sister, amen, by way of love, Sister Brittany uh, Moore Davis, we praise God for her as well as the rest of the family, and, um, and my brother, Earl Davis, amen. Uh, sister Tawana Brooks, God bless you. Sister Marcia Kova, we give God praise for you and Brother Demetrius. Sister Takara Glover Henderson, God bless you and uh, Brother Curtis is right there with you. Praise God for that. Y'all know I get excited when we have uh, married couples that are together for prayer. Uh, that, that just does something to my heart to have husband and wife right there to side by side. Uh, Sister Lena Arterberry, God bless you. Sister Alma Thomas, God bless you. Uh, Sister Bonnie White, God bless you. And let's see here. Sister Takara, you're tagging people on a virtual prayer wall. I'm excited about it. Sister Sally Freeman, uh, blessings to you. Brother James, Sister Didi, come through. I love it. Uh, God bless you both. Uh, let's see here. Sister Priscilla Grimes, God bless you over on YouTube. Uh, Sister Amanda M. Flowers, uh, you're, you're doing both things. You're saying hello and you're tagging people in the virtual prayer wall. I love it. Uh, Sister Clara Clark, God bless you. Sister Gail Johnson Perry, we praise God for your presence. Uh, Minister Haynes, D'Angela Haynes, we praise God for you. And uh, let's see here. Brother Jermaine Lately, God bless you, sir. And Sister Beverly Wright Brinson. Well, listen, um, it's time for us to prepare to get started. Uh, God bless you, Brother TJ uh, Schneider. We praise God for you, sir. Brother Terry, Sister Connie. Listen, y'all are y'all are warming up my heart this morning. I love it. But we praise God for each of you. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started this morning. God bless you, 
Pastor Horn, we praise God for you, sir. Uh, one of our brothers in the CCFM Fellowship, as well as Sister Lizzie Brooks, God bless you. Um, good morning, Sister Agnes, Bernice Ellie, God bless you. Well, listen, let's take a second and begin to get started. Today is a special day. Um, we're having a special conversation uh, targeted on this topic of holy hardship. Uh, we have a special guest that's with us, Pastor Anthony A. Dix, um, Jr., who's going to share with us this morning um, really how this book came to be. And I really want to have a discussion with him around this topic and uh, talk through, you know, perhaps uh, some thoughts that it stirred up within me and thoughts that it may generate in others. And I do encourage you that once we're done, um, well, already prepare yourself to look this book up and purchase it on Amazon. Uh, I encourage every believer, every leader, which every believer is a leader, amen, to certainly get a copy of this book. But let's read a scripture to start off. Philippians chapter 3. I'm going to read verses 7 through 10 out of the New King James Version. And it says, but what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Now listen to verse 10. This is the reason why we're here. It says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. And I may as well get verse 11 as well, because that's important. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. That was Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 11 out of the New King James Version. Well, I've introduced myself earlier. My name is Enrique Brooks, senior pastor of Thrive Church and the host of the Prayer 365 podcast. Well, we're on a mission to transform lives through the lifestyle of prayer. Um, today is going to be different than what we have done previously. We're going to have a conversation, but I believe that it's still going to be a powerful devotion this morning as we have a conversation with our guest, uh, Pastor Anthony A. Dix. I want to uh, take a moment to share a bit of an introduction about Pastor Dix. Um, if you are, uh, some of you may have seen him before, uh, but Pastor Dix, uh, he's a leader among leaders. Uh, he has a passion for leadership development, and it's seen through his work with emerging leaders. He spent over two decades preparing people who are called into ministry, the marketplace, or another mountain of influence for their kingdom assignment. And he encourages kingdom leaders to develop the passionate desire to ascend to a new level of power and practice. Uh, Pastor Dix is also a professional with a BS in Applied Mathematics from North Carolina A&T State University. He has an MBA uh, from Webster University, an MAR in Theological Studies from, uh, from Lutheran Theological Southern Seminary, an Executive Certificate in Digital Marketing from Cornell University. Um, he currently serves as the pastor and founder of Mount Zion Church. He's also the CEO of A.A. Dix Global and the Dean of the Ministry Academy at Equip University. And the author of the, of the book that we're going to talk about today, Holy Hardship, How Jesus Turns Your Adversity into an Advantage, uh, which released earlier this year. And brothers and sisters, most of all, I want you to know that he's a wonderful uh, and a great husband, as well as a, a wonderful father as well. And he's also a great friend. Um, I want to uh, introduce to everyone and uh, present to others as well that we have this morning with us, Pastor Anthony A. Dix. Let's go ahead and bring you on in, Pastor. 
Uh, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Pastor Brooks, and thank you so very much for having me this morning. I'm extremely honored and elated to have this opportunity to share in this conversation and grateful for all that you are doing to promulgate the gospel of Jesus Christ and to impart unto people the importance and power of prayer. So thank you this morning and to thank thank all of you for joining us this morning. Hey Amen. Well, sir, listen, I, I'm so excited. I've been stirred up about this, about having you in. I was so excited when you were asking for invitations uh, to go uh, to appear on podcast. I was like, listen, wow. we've got to get him here um, wow. because this is something I believe is helping the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise yes, the Lord. Sir. Thank you so much for giving me this inv invitation and this opportunity. Yes, sir. Well, listen, let's jump. Let's jump right on in. Um this is the book, y'all. Holy Hardship. Um, I, I went ahead and grabbed a copy immediately, and it was here, I think, uh, for my birthday weekend is when it came in. <laughs> and what a birthday gift it was and has been. I tell you, Pastor, um, two chapters in, I made a post, and I did not do so just to do so. I made a post because uh, two chapters in, uh, you hit you hit several points that really began to stir me up in this book. Um, but before we get deep into it, I want you to tell me how did this book or tell everybody how this book came to be, uh, what inspired it and, and what caused you to actually turn it into into this 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 form that it is today? Well, the book was um, born out of two things. Uh, one is controversy. The other was a conversation. Mm. I um, was pastoring a local church here where I live and went through some controversy while, while pastoring. And uh, during that time, the Lord spoke to me and showed me some things about hardship and how Jesus can turn your adversity into an advantage. And uh, in a conversation with a colleague while riding around in, in Atlanta, I was sharing to him some of the things that the Lord had shown me because he went through a similar circumstance in his former pastorate. And he said, Rev, man, you should write a book about that because that can help a lot of people. Your perspective on this could help a lot of people. And so that's the impetus that really pushed me to put pen to paper or to sit down for mornings on end to write this work. And uh, it was therapeutic. It was uh, ministry. And uh, it was it was born out of those two things, controversy and and a conversation. It was also born out of prophecy because, you know, someone shared with me prophetically that I had two or three books in me. I just didn't have a subject at that point. But when mm. God gave me the subject, I, I had to had to really release it. And the thesis of of the text that you read really was the impetus behind the book that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. The original title to the work was the fellowship of suffering uh, because yes, it was born out of that um, scripture that Paul said about connecting power of the resurrection to the fellowship of the cross. And the book was initially thrust around this idea of being inducted, being initiated, being invited into a fellowship of suffering. And uh, that's that's how the book came came to be. Listen, I'm, uh, you you struck you, you stirred up a couple of things that I, that I heard you talk about. One thing in particular, let's talk about how this friend encouraged you mm -hmm. to write this book. Um, what I'm reminded of is the conversation that Jesus had with Peter. Mm. Uh, when he told him that yes. Satan desires to sift yeah. you as wheat. This is something you talked about in the yeah. book. Um, but he said, but um, after you have after you have returned, he mm -hmm. said to strengthen the brethren. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I hope I'm saying that and quoting that correctly. Mm -hmm. But essentially, um, what you're doing through the book is it appears that, and well, it's clear to me that you're strengthening, strengthening the brethren. Yes, sir. Um, I found strength through this book. Praise the Lord. One of the things that really stuck out to me was your use of Peter as a subject mm -hmm. in this book. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I appreciate that you really highlighted Peter's humanity from a different perspective, mm. uh, Peter's uh, imperfections, mm-hmm. uh, how he struggled with becoming like Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Pastor, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's something about um, staying away from highlighting or at least um, putting any emphasis on our struggles as people mm-hmm. uh, that causes us to uh, have this 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 unnatural sense of perfection, mm-hmm. whereas the Bible doesn't paint that picture. Um, mm-hmm. You said yourself that you found you found familiarity in Peter. Could you describe how it is that that you found yourself identifying with Peter? You know, Peter was the one of the apostles that are highlighted in the Gospels and, of course, in the Book of Acts. And it's what resonates with him and how he's presented throughout the gospel is that the gospel writers do not couch him as a perfect disciple. He is the imperfect disciple. He's the same one who, to whom was said, you know, I give unto you the keys of the kingdom. He is the same one who walked on water, but he is also the one who cut off Malchus's ear. He's also the one who denied Jesus three times. He's also the one who whipped bitterly. So you get to see in Peter the struggle of discipleship and how much is demanded of you when you follow Jesus Christ. And that resonated with me because I've struggled trying to be more like Christ. Mm. You know, we often in in ministry see people who do not expose us to the vulnerability of their humanity after being saved mm. you know um when when you are saved by his power divine you don't become according to second corinthians you are still yet becoming <laughs> and as we are becoming new all things become new there's still struggles there there's still yeah. Simon in the midst of Peter, which is what Jesus called him when he talked about him being sifted as wheat. Simon, Simon, Satan wants to sift you as wheat, but I prayed for you that your faith fail you not. And when you are converted, changed, return back to what? Back to being Peter. He's going to get all the Simon out of you and what's left in you is going to be Peter. Understanding that process really resonated with me because it aligned with my lived experience as well as theological concepts. So so Peter was that guy to me. And one of the things that struck me about Peter is the, 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 the irony. When it came to the cross, Peter was not the Simon that followed Jesus closely. Mm, that's good. There was another Simon who was pulled out of the crowd yeah. And given the cross of Jesus Christ. So so just all of those ironies literarily in the text just spoke to, you know, just spoke to me tremendously. And that's why I wrote about some of it, some of it in the book. Yes, sir. Well, I tell you, um, one of the key things I just heard you say was talking about um, him being given the keys to the kingdom. Mm-hmm. And you you made a distinguishment in the book about uh, the preaching of the kingdom um, mm-hmm. versus paying the price of the kingdom. Mm-hmm. How the kingdom must be preached, but the price must be paid. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you have to say to those of us who have struggled with a theology uh, that highlights the glory of the mm-hmm. kingdom, um, but then we are confronted with or even um, struggle with this bombarding and seems even antagonistic Mm. um, suffering that's at the cost of the kingdom. Uh, What do you have to say to the one who's who's struggling with that? Not all suffering is created equal, first of all. Um, In in the text, well, throughout the the Bible, you see people suffering. You even see Jesus suffering. The distinction about the suffering of Jesus Christ or suffering for the cause of Christ is that type of suffering is redemptive. It is a suffering that can lead to restoration. It can lead to resurrection. It's, It's something that you come out better because of it. As the psalmist says, 
I was glad that I had been afflicted. Or as Paul says, these light afflictions, which are but for a moment do work for us, are far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. And so the whole Christian paradigm is not a paradigm that is devoid of the elephant in the room, which is why do we suffer? Mm. It repositions suffering. I, I was reading a, a something the other day from my systematic theology professor in, in the book that he, he, uh, he wrote, and he was talking about how the death of Jesus Christ not only did something for humanity, but it did something to death. Mm. That before the death of Jesus Christ, people, if you read the Old Testament, wanted to avoid death. Wow. But after the death of Jesus Christ, you get people like Paul saying to live is Christ and to die is gain. Come on. And so Jesus not only did something for life, Jesus is death, did something to death. Death, where is your sting? So he didn't take death out of the present. He took the sting out of it. He takes yeah. the sting out of suffering by his power divine. And when we follow his model, we also get to it be... Uh, a part of his glorious his glorious reward and so redemptive suffering is rewarding that's what i mean by holy hardship that's what is meant by sovereign suffering that's the advantage in adversity is that if you suffer like him and by like i don't mean you suffer with the roman flagellum or 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 a cross physically but if you suffer as he did, if you handled your hardship like Jesus handled his, there's a resurrection and an mm. on the other side of that, whereby you can now become a model for other people to follow. That's good, sir. I, I appreciate this so much because, you know, and Pastor, if I could for just a moment, just take you down a personal reflection of mine. Sure, sure. Um, growing up, Growing up, or I'll say as a young man in ministry um, and beginning to study, there was a topic that was often brought up in music as well as in preaching. And it was this this um, this needing for brokenness um, mm -hmm. that God desires mm -hmm. that we be broken mm -hmm. and going to um, the 51st chapter or 51st Psalm. Um, verse 17, where David uh, talks about how God will not despise a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, um, the way that I perceived it and the way that it was taught to me was that God desires this. And I tell you that mm -hmm. I had a personal struggle because even though I, I would hear the preaching about um, about the other side of it, oh, you're coming out and, you know, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory. I appreciate all of that. Um, but what what it what it caused me to do was struggle with my own personal walk, because I'm like, God, this doesn't feel good. Um, this is painful. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um uh, I, I was a very stubborn person. Uh, I had character issues that God had to crush, and it was painful. Mm. Uh, my mm. unforgiveness, mm. I did not want to forgive people. Uh, mm. My pride, um, those things were, were big in me. And so for to feel that sense of crushing, mm -hmm. uh, that sense of um, bearing the cross and self-denial, it seemed like it was, uh, I, and this is just this is just the way that it was starting to form in me. I'm like, God, is God a sadist? Does mm -hmm. he get pleasure yeah. Yeah. out of this? And mm -hmm. while I understand that it pleased him to bruise Jesus, That's what, it says. Uh, what I what I realized, and after reading your book, and I'm almost done with it, but after reading it, um, I went back to the 51st Psalm, and I looked at verse 17, and I did a word study on broken. And one of the other words for that word broken is birth. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I said, wait a minute, God. So uh, really what you're telling me is that you're not so much pleased with the with the crushing or the breaking mm -hmm. in itself, mm -hmm. but you're concerned with who I become on the other side mm -hmm. of the breaking. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, could you mm -hmm. share could you share about mm -hmm. who you have become on the other side? of your brokenness? One of the things that um, 
brokenness yields because it is indeed a birthing. I, I am of the mind that you can't come into the earth without a womb. You mm. can't get into the kingdom without a tomb. Wow. So the wait tomb... a second, wait a second, wait a second. Wait, pump your brakes, <laughs> sir. <laughs> I, I don't want that to fly by. Uh, you can't get into the world without a womb, mm -hmm. and you cannot get into the kingdom without a tomb. No, you can't. My Lord. You can't get into the world without a womb. You can't get into the kingdom without a tomb. And they have similarities. Um, and those similarities are both are very dark. Mm. Both are very dark. A child is conceived and, and, and developed in a dark place and then pushed out of that place into the light. Yeah. And that's what the tomb served as for the Lord Jesus Christ. It was a dark place, but on Sunday, he was pushed out into the light as a new person. And one of the things that is birthed in a, in a place of brokenness when you come out of the darkness into the light is compassion. Wow. Compassion. Holy hardship should not make you more competitive. It should not make you more combative. That's good. It should make you more compassionate. Mm -hmm. Compassionate. And um, I, my heart is different. Wow. Because of my hardship. Um, I don't, the, if you read the book, there are some things that happen to me because that's what passion is about. People doing things to you that even in the midst of that, I can't hold that against anybody. I don't place blame on anybody. It's crazy. It sounds crazy. I could see how things unfolded in such mm. a way where they were beneficial to me. Yeah. And I can't help but say to Judas and all others, thank you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And so it makes you more compassionate. And there's one principle that I and I don't know how far you got into the book, and I want to I don't want to uh, do any spoiler alerts. But there's a principle of forgiveness at the end of the book that talks about forgiving, but not forgetting, mm. forgiving but not forgetting. And um, this there's certain things that you should not forget in holy hardship. You forgive, you forgive the misery, but you never forget the meaning. Mm. Wow. The misery of the cross yeah. is, is not what Jesus touts. He touts the meaning of the cross. Your cross has meaning and it can give you, it can give you meaning. And when you embrace the meaning of your misery, yeah. it should make you a much more compassionate person. It gives you a more compelling power. You'll be able to ascend to places that you were never, never able to ascend before. People won't be able to bring you down to their level like they were able to bring you down before. I mean, there's so many other benefits of living on the other side of hardship that if you handle it well, you can experience the power of the resurrection. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor, I think that that's a powerful um, place to, to bring this to a resolve. Yes, sir. Um, if you could, for the next the next minute or so, um, lead us to a place of prayer. And I want you to take into consideration uh, the person who's who's bearing their cross or even, I would say, undergoing the crucifixion at this mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. um, the one who is now um, finding hope in the cross that they're carrying. Um, the one who is... Um, the one who... Uh, who's finding, who needs inspiration and encouragement, um, the one who uh, is preparing mm -hmm. to bear the cross. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, and, it, and there's a, the, the devil desires, the devil desires to draw them back to a re-trigger traumas from their mm. past mm. Um, by the cross. Mm. Mm. I, I want you to keep all of them into consideration as you pray, but please lead us, Pastor. Father, I thank you for all those who are under the sound of, of our voices as we converge in this moment to pray to you about helping us navigate holy hardship, which is hardship that has taken the form 
of a cross. Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who picked up his cross first and led the way, shows us mm. how to handle hardship. I thank you for your son because he made room in paradise for a thief on the cross. Yes, so whether we bear our cross because of a gift or whether we bear our cross because of guilt, you have made a way for us to overcome it all. Thank you, Lord. Father, I know that what we are suffering, what we are facing, it seems and it feels painful. But I pray that you would show someone that holy hardship, though it may be painful, it is still purposeful. Hallelujah. There is a purpose for your pain. Glory. And I pray that you would give people a perspective for the purpose of their pain in the name of Jesus Thank Christ. You, Lord. I pray that you would show them that even though it's painful, they are still filled with purpose. There's still purpose in you. There's still gift in you. There's still talent in you. There's still drive in you. There is still holy ambition in you. There is still a zeal in you. And mm. the cross has not come to doubt it, the cross has come to birth it and to release it. I yes, pray, Lord. Father, that you not only show them that it may be painful, but it is also purposeful, but show them that it is profitable, that it is profitable, that they will come out of this better than they came in it, that yes, the Lord. resurrection is not about getting things back to normal, but mm. the resurrection is about growing Glory. better than normal. Things are going to get Hallelujah. better. Hallelujah. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that that prophetic word yeah, rings God. in their ear, that even in the midst of hardship, we can have hardship that is holy Hallelujah. because holy hardship comes with a promise, and the promise is things are going to Glory. get better. Things are going to get better in your marriage. Things yes, are going Lord. to get better for your career. Things are going to get better for your children. Children, things are going to get better in your body. Things are going to get better financially. Hallelujah. Things are going to get better in ministry. I pray Glory. that these, your people, would suffer like Jesus did and yes, come out God. triumphant on the other side with Thank power you, and authority, saying that we are of good cheer because he has overcome the world. I thank you for it by the yes, power Lord. of the Holy Ghost. We thank rejoice you, in it now. Yeah, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, Pastor, I, I could talk to you about this for um, for at least an hour. <laughs> but I, I'm so grateful that you decided to join us um, this Friday morning. Everyone, I want to remind you, um, go on Amazon, um, purchase this book. Or um, as a matter of fact, Pastor, tell them um, the, your website address where they can go and get a copy of this as well. Thank you so much, Pastor Brooks, again, for inviting me and giving me this opportunity to share with, with the people of God placed up under your charge and influence. If you would like a copy of Holy Hardship, you can go to holyhardship.com and you will get two benefits, actually. You'll get access to purchasing the book. And because this is a prayer platform, there is also a seven-day video devotional that is free if you visit the website and register for for that that video devotional while I go through seven days telling you and teaching you seven things you should pray for as you go through holy hardship. You can get both of those resources by visiting holyhardship.com. Pastor, thank you so much. I, I appreciate you, you in so many ways. Listen, um, if this has been a blessing to you, everyone, I do encourage you to share this with someone. Uh, tag someone's name in the comment section so that they'll be notified. There's someone you know that needs to know that there's meaning behind that misery, that there's an advantage in their adversity. Uh, God bless all of you. I love you. And um, we'll see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. for prayer at the altar, as well as on Sunday during our Sunday worship experience at 11. We're going to wrap up our series titled Raising Kingdom Kids, mm -hmm. hashtag becoming. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.